experiment by using the Fibonacci series, writing an Excel spreadsheet to uh, look at some properties of, of the Fibonacci uh, series. Uh, let me first explain how we generate the Fibonacci numbers. Now, what I'm going to show right here in the first column, right in here, is the normal Fibonacci uh, sequence. So I'm going to start with the two numbers. So I just uh, define that the first two numbers are going to be 0 and 1. The next value here is the sum of these two numbers. So 0 plus 1 is 1. Okay, then the next value after that is the sum of these two numbers. Uh, so we have 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. This value is the sum of 2 and 1, and so on, all the way down. So for each term here uh, in this column, we have it set up such that that term, this is A12, the value of A12 is generated by summing A10 and A11. So that's a, the typical Fibonacci sequence. Uh, the other columns here, I call this one x1 of n. I have x2 of n and x3 of n. We also follow the Fibonacci rule. I just begin with different starting values. So for example, 13 is the sum of 9 plus 4. 17 is the sum of 13 plus 4, and so on all the way down. Similarly, over here, I begin with 8 and 13. Their sum is 21. Then we sum 21 and, 21 and 13 to get, 20, uh, to get 34, and so on all the way down. So I'm investigating what happens when we execute the Fibonacci pattern or the Fibonacci algorithm using different starting initial conditions. Um, in this column right in here, what I'm doing is I'm looking at what happens when we take the present number divided by the previous number. So 2 divided by 1, okay, is, uh, is 2. Here we have 1. 1 is 1 divided by 1. If we take 5 divided by 3, we get 1.66666 all the way on like that. So you see, and then what I'm doing uh, is, uh, is then putting that number in here. So let's pick a number. Let's pick this one. You see, uh, this is a14 is a14 here is um, equal to a14. I'm sorry, this is b14 is equal to a14 divided by a13. So we do that all the way down. We do the same thing over here. For example, this is d10 divided by d9. So we have that e10 is d10 divided by d9. Okay, so that's how the spreadsheet is set up. Notice also I have the labels. Um, I would want you to put your name, homework number one, and, and then make it make it look nice. Now, of course, you know, make it making it look nice isn't exactly uh, mandatory, especially if you're using the spreadsheet for yourself and not giving it to anyone else. However, um, uh, what I've learned uh, with hard experience over the years is that you should make it so that it, the, the presentation is fairly self-explanatory because at some point, maybe weeks, months, or even years later, you can come back to look at this and if you just have columns of numbers, you go, boy, how did I generate those numbers? Um, it's for the same reason that you want to comment a code written in, in computer language. When you comment a computer program, you comment it as much for yourself uh, as anyone so that when you come back to it at some point down the line, it's pretty straightforward to understand. So this is why I took some time to set up uh, fairly explanatory labels and then... Uh, uh, and also to try to do the formatting so it's uh, it's neat. Of course, if you're going to pass this on to somebody else, it's of tremendous value 
um, if you're an employee somewhere and you pass on a spreadsheet or any other piece of software, let's say to a supervisor or to someone who's paying you, if you make it look neat and fairly easy to understand, it really buys you a lot of points. So I, uh, this is why I want to comment uh, on how you make it look neat. Now notice also in my formatting, I'm not actually showing the individual cells, the lines that designate the cells. Um, that uh, as much is to show you, in fact, that you can do that. Uh, and the way you show or don't show the lines is you, you go to your formatting palette, at least in my version of Excel, we do that. And then uh, you can uh, check whether you're going to view the grid lines or if you view them, if you're going to print them. And then how about the headings? So for example, if I click View Grid Lines, see all these grid lines appear. Okay, notice they're not showing up here. That's because I've uh, put a, a background layer on there, and that's hiding the grid lines. So we can view the grid lines, but if we view them, we don't have to print them. Uh, so we can view them, and then if we print the spreadsheet, we don't uh, see the view lines. Uh, and then the headings. What are the headings? The headings across the top are A, B, C, D, and then 1, 2, 3, 4 down the side. So I could take the headings out and I get that. Okay, I'm going to leave these headings in there like that. Okay, so notice now I have three columns uh, generating uh, three versions of the Fibonacci sequence just using different initial conditions. Um, and uh, the uh, so let me just go over for you again how I put the formulas into this x1 column. So look here. Notice that I have it's equal to this. This is a13 is equal to the sum of a11 and a12. So I have my initial condition there, my initial condition there. Notice I have no formula there. But then right here I start the formula equals a2 plus a5. So what I would do is once I write this formula here once, I can drag on the corner, drag it all the way down, and the formula will automatically repeat with the, with the correct cell references. So when this is A4 plus A5, this will become A5 plus A6, this one A6 plus A7, and so on. And then this formula here is the quotient I get by dividing the current value in the x column with the previous value in the x column. So a13 divided by a12 is what we get here. Now with all of that, notice something really interesting is that no matter which two starting conditions I use, when, no matter what the initial conditions are, and I generate completely different numbers down on these columns, but no matter what the starting conditions, it appears that the ratio of two successive values always goes to this 1.618033399. Always goes to that no matter what. So now the, the last part of doing this spreadsheet involves uh, I actually decided to graph the data. Now I realize that um, I may not have covered how to do Excel charts um, um, by the uh, uh, first class when you have uh, when you're given this homework as an assignment, uh, but I plot the graphs of the numbers in these three columns here, this column, this column, this column. So this is F1, F2, and F3 right here, and I graph those here with different colors. You see F1 is blue. F2 is red, F3 is green. So you can see as I, I'm plotting the ratio now, uh, the F numbers, and you see they, this shows them all converging to that same value as the value of N increases. So what I'm plotting here are the values of the F numbers uh, on the Y axis. The X axis is the index value here. And uh, so um, I will 
discuss how we do graphs like that um, in the classroom. Uh, and you can always experiment and investigate it on your own. And as I've said many times, um, you live in this wonderful, marvelous age where we have uh, Google, YouTube, and uh, I can almost always find a posted YouTube video that shows how to do anything I want to do. I can say that it's unusual for me not to find a YouTube video that that solves the problem that I need solved. And uh, so uh, I'm always suggesting if you want to do something in Excel or anything else for that matter, that you just go to YouTube and put in your question and see what comes up. Okay, so here I'm graphing F here versus this column right in here. I've got three sets of data. All three sets of data will go onto the same graph. So I'll leave it for you here to investigate how you might do this, and uh, hopefully I will talk about that in the classroom. But uh, uh, that, that finishes this particular discussion.